All right, guys, welcome to this uh, quick tutorial where I am going to show you how you can basically use the Cinematic Pro LUTs to your biggest advantage and also just, you know, show you a few tricks basically how you can really um, use them in a way that they are intent to be used because I think many people believe, and uh, let me just quickly put myself up here so it makes a bit more sense. Um, you know, many people are using or think that LUTs are the ultimate solution. You just basically drag and drop them and then you're kind of like, you know, um, it's good to go and everything looks perfect and there is no issues um, and the colors are always matching your footage, blah, blah, blah. That is not the case. Like, LUTs are not here they are no, f they are not like filters, like you know, on Instagram, you basically f put on a filter, and then, you know, that's pretty much it. There is no, um, there's not a lot of room or flexibility to actually adjust those uh, those LUTs, or those those filters in this case. So with LUTs, you are basically giving the the image you have in front of you certain information, and then. From there, you basically start your grade. So it's like like a lot, you know, is a lookup table. So that means you are basically telling the the, the software and also your image with the colors. <clears throat> excuse me, um, that you are starting out from a certain reference point, and then you go from there. And you know, there are so many things you need to kind of like also take into consideration when it comes to how like how you actually use those LUTs because um, the way you shoot and the lighting conditions and um, you know how you also you um, basically use your own software be it now here DaVinci or be it Final Cut or be it um, Premiere or whatever of, or CapCut like they all have different ways and different limitations so you cannot just like you know, come here and be like, okay, let's just throw this in and um, and we are good to go. So I want to show you just, you know, kind of like how I basically grade because this, like these are specifically cinematic pro LUTs. I'm calling this pro because um, I really think they have... Uh, a lot more room to play with when it comes to like you know adjustments and grading and all that and they are not just kind of like your usual drag and drop uh, LUT which should never be the case anyway but I want to show you that if you are someone who likes to drag and drop you actually can do that um, you know I'm not saying you should do that that's why I'm actually um, creating this tutorial um, but you can if you want to. If you really like, hey, I just want some LUTs and they actually look good, um, then you can do that. But I would say you still would need some uh, some adjustments. So anyway, um, let's say you have, you know, we go straight into color, um, into the color tab. And also, you know, if you are not familiar with DaVinci, I mean, there is a lot of things you actually need to consider, uh, or a few things, not a lot, but uh, to get the colors right. So do not come into this and then expect that you just get the right colors. Like color settings, color management, um, this is the way I do it. This is the way I set up my, um, yeah, my color space. Um, you know, timeline color space is the Da Vinci. Um, yeah, Da Vinci. And then the output color space is the Rec. 709. A and A stands for Apple, I think, because uh, the, the monitors and you know has a bit of like different um, uh, colors, I guess, and gamma shifts and whatnot. So this is very important. Otherwise, um, there's a lot of like kind of you know uh, differences in colors um, and how that works in Final Cut and on Premiere. I have not really. Uh, a clue because that's not like I used to work in Premiere but yeah uh, there's many reasons why I left so anyway um, if you want to drag and drop like I just want to quickly show you these are all shot 
uh, in, in log, um, in, in Canon C log 3, with the, um, yeah, with pr pretty much the best kind of, uh, you know, the best um, possible picture quality you can get, like in terms of uh, dynamic range and, and, you know, just, yeah. I would say if, if these are, like these LUTs are made for very flat profiles, basically. So do not buy them if you want to basically uh, just have a quick thick, uh, fix on, on whatever camera you're shooting on. Like you, you can, because I actually use, like I have the um, Direct 709 right here. So if, if you're shooting Rec 709, you can do that. But um, for the sake of this video, I will mainly focus on, uh, on the log files. So but anyway, let's just take this for example. It's a very simple shot. This is probably where you also want to use it. Um, it's me basically just, you know, uh, pretending that I am uh, holding a workshop or something or recording a video here. Um, so there's nothing here. There's, n there's just one node. Uh, there's nothing fancy going on. And if I just hover over them, then you can see what's happening. You know, these are straight out of the gate. Like you could drop, drag and drop them and they would look like this on your um, log files, basically. Um, so you can already tell that they work. They do work. Um, you know, this is a bit of more aggressive, kind of like vintage look. Um, I try to spice it up a little bit uh, here and there. So there's 10, 10 of these. Um, they are fully log in this case. Um, and then again, you have the Rec 709. Uh, let's go with another example. I'm not doing anything here. I'm basically just hovering over them for the preview and you can see how it looks basically. Um, you know, these do work with a simple drag and drop kind of situation. Um, but now I also want to really just kind of show you a way how you can actually use them in a way that they are just, you know, more professionally being used. Like, again, this is, um, like LUTs are not here to just kind of like throw on top and then, um, and then be done with it. So let's just ho uh, go over to the first timeline where I basically just want to kind of, um, you know, show you a few, um, yeah, like just a few ways how I basically start uh, grading um, my, my, my footage. Uh, and I want to do this, and actually I should have done this before. Let's just give me a bit more space. I'm here on a laptop right now. I'm sitting in Bali <laughs> uh, in a co-working space, so um, there's not much uh, flexibility when it comes to... Uh, you know, screens and all that. But anyway, um, I'm just gonna reset everything here and we're gonna start from scratch so I can really show you what I am doing, um, you know, from, from, from A to B basically and then, you know, go from there. So usually what you want to do, what you want to do is you wanna have, um, let me just, grab this and kind of throw this over here. Um, you want to have the, like, we, I'm going to kill this one because I'm not going to, like, this isn't the, the color space transformation node. We're going to use this for one of the examples here, but in general, I, I'm usually shooting in log and I just really want to start with the log file and not with the Rec 709 file. But I will definitely uh, show you an example how I am using this as well. For now, this is not the one we are going to uh, start out with. So what we have here is we have a node tree. It's a kind of a basic one, but it's still more in depth than you just would have usually probably. I don't know. Um, I mean, there's many ways how you can call it great in Da Vinci and that's a beautiful thing. It's limit I think it's literally limitless. Um, but yeah, this is kind of like how I like these LUTs here is, is how I basically color grade I would say 
80 to 90 percent of the time. So th what I'm doing here is a way I think it always kind of works, um, is, and it's how I learned it over the last um, you know years. Um, I have been watching a lot of like I've, I've seen a lot of like uh, tutorials and you know kind of like educating myself around um, how to really uh, get good results with LUTs, but also how to keep it simple because you can stretch these node trees to like infinite you know um, nodes basically, and then if you don't really know what you're doing, then it's kind of like okay, fuck, what am I actually doing here now? So. We have eight nodes. Again, one is going to be ignored for now just because we are not using it to transform right now. We're going to do this afterwards in a different example. And we're going to just straight go into white balance. And that's, that's, that's a very important one, just checking if there is nothing active here. That's a very important one because people think, again, that you know just because they basically have some kind of footage that everything just you know now has to work uh, with the LUTs and whatnot. So you first have to really ch like go to a point where your white balance is completely or more or less there where you need to have it balanced. And you can really do that by, like I, I like to use the parade um, view that just really gives me an idea where the highlights are, where the midtones are, and also where the shadows are. And I actually... This one looks very balanced out of the gate because I think, you know, I just really uh, had the right white balance settings here. That's also an in-camera setting that you have to do correctly. Um, and that's why if this one would be off, it would be very necessary to, to balance it right. You know, that this was like a, a very cloudy kind of like casted day um, if I would have had my settings on, I don't know, full sun, like full daylight or like indoor, um, you know, whatever, white balance, then this would be completely off. And then, you know, I don't know, it would probably look like something like very weird. And then you would need to correct it very heavily because it's clearly off. In this case, it's actually very balanced, which kind of like... Um, it's nice to see, um, but for the sake of it, I'm also, like I'm using Parade first and then I'm going into the vector scope and this tells me where I am when it comes to the white balance itself and we are very good in the middle, like this could actually be somewhere here, you know, and then we're like, okay, this really needs to be, you know, dragged over and uh, just balanced, but we have a good starting point. I'm not even going to touch this one because, again, you can also you know, do a lot of things with white balance that then makes your life more complicated than it should be. Um, so we're going to go straight into primaries, back to the parade, straight into primaries, and then what I'm going to do, because it's very balanced here, right, um, I'm just going to kind of drag up the, the contrast, and then with the pivot, I'm going to bring up certain, uh, you know, certain shadows, so I have a bit more flexibility later. Um, you know, I could also give it a bit more gain, just a little bit, but not too much, you know. And that's pretty much what I would be doing in the primaries for now. Uh, I can always come back to this. That's the beautiful thing about notes. There's no, like, you can always hop back and just make uh, adjustments because this will, like, if you're just this and then hop over to this, this will now be your output um, or your, your input for this. And then you do something here and then it goes back to, like, it's very, um, like the, the whole kind of Da Vinci note structure situation is very intuitive. So, um, yeah, you need to get used to it at first because you may be probably coming from layers, you know, like adjustment layers and all that stuff. Um, but this is actually way easier once you get the hang of it. Um, so, yeah, all we're going to do here. And now we're going to skip the look correction because the look correction is basically um, correcting the LUT. Um, you do not want to correct the LUT afterwards or even on the LUT because that would damage the LUT. Like you need to do it before for plenty of reasons because otherwise you will basically kind of crush the highlights and the shadows and it will look 
not good and it's just the wrong way to do it. I can promise you that. I have been trying out a lot of different ways and also watching a lot of tutorials myself and this is the way to go. Uh, so you basically want to just have this in front of it and then you go straight to the LUT, skip this for now and now we could, we're just going to throw on a LUT, you know, let's just go um, with something that we are maybe, you know, it's tropical, it's, it's kind of like freshy, like fresh colors, like let's just take this, the Cinematic Pro number three. All right, just gonna close this for real, like for real estate reasons. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, this is now basically, all we have done is we have white balanced it, which it kind of was already. We have, you know, uh, put some contrast and gain on, the, on, on that image. Um, and then we put a lot on there. Now, this note here, it would come into the game only if you now would be like, okay, the, you know, the, the, the blue tones or the, the, the skin tone is off or something is just not feeling right about this look. Then you would make those adjustments in this note right here. You wouldn't make it here because that would just kind of like mess up your entire idea of the how you, how your note tree is structured and organized so you really want to focus on making look adjustments in the look correction and everything that is kind of primary like contrast you know um, gain uh, pulling up some shadows and whatnot um, that's primary but if it goes into like colors and you know just a bit more kind of like second um, secondary uh, color grading, then this happens basically in the look correction. So, again, this happens before, not after. If it would be after, um, then it would just not look the same and it would kind of like destroy your lot. Okay, let's say I like it how this is. I mean, again, I could go and basically you know, make adjustments if I want to. Um, but this is very secondary and I do not want to spend a lot of time uh, doing that, but um, you know, usually what that would mean is I would go into the hues and kind of like saturation and, and hue and reverses. Like I would go in here, uh, pick a color and then kind of like adjust um, how I want it to look. You know, I could make it a bit more um, like less uh, poppy or more poppy or whatever. Like this is advanced, you don't have to do this, but obviously it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, that you actually can go in here and then play around with the different kind of like elements, you know, just to make it, just to make it look better. But um, yeah, I will just keep this now so we actually have a little correction here. But you can see the blue now is kind of like reduced in terms of like, um, uh, yeah, luminance. And then I just popped my skin tone a bit so it looks, you know, it looks a bit more... Um, kind of like cinematic and all that. Cool. So then next thing I would be doing is I would be going straight into my most favorite effect, um, which is the glow. And then I'm just going to put my face over here. Um, and the glow, I don't know, like I have seen this once when I was uh, watching a tutorial and then I was completely hooked by it. So yeah, you're going to throw it on, on this uh, glow node. And then you're going to go down to composite type um, and you're going to f uh, put it on soft light. And then from here, you really want to make the adjustment. And you just kind of like, I mean, this is kind of like, you know, experimenting how it looks. Um, like there is no right or wrong here. I mean, there is. But, you know, you really need to just be very kind of like subtle with the gain, uh, with, the, with the adjustments and also just check your... Um, your scopes, right? Like you don't want to do this or completely like uh, crush one. Like if I go up all the way, you can see the shadows are going to get crushed. And if I go like this threshold here with the shine or if I go up, then my highlight's going to get crushed. So you want to have it somewhere that it just really looks still natural and not like completely all over the place. Let's just say hey, this is somewhere here, like that the mid-tones are very kind of like, you know, in a good spot and then the spread basically determines um, how much glow there will be right so 
in my case, I always kind of like really focus on the midtones and that, you know, just the shadows and highlights are not, are not crushed, basically. So let's say, you know, something like this would something, yeah, that would be something I like. And the gain is just the overall kind of like intensity of the of this shine kind of look. And what it does, it just gives you a, a bit of a dreamy, but also cinematic, like even more cinematic kind of way um, of how the image looks. So it looks, I mean, we're coming from here and we are here now with minor adjustments, I would say. I mean, I'm rambling a bit here, so, you know, this would be very quick. In, like, this would literally go a few, a few clicks and you hear if you, if you do this over and over again. And shout out to everyone who has spotted the cute little dog here. Um, but yeah, this, this is like how it just feels more, I don't know, it just pops more. I don't know if I'm just too hyped up, um, too, um, too uh, hyped up about it. But, um, but yeah, this is what it is. Um, then the vignetting, um, yeah, honestly, this would be actually the last thing, but um, we're going to do it now. Uh, because the grain also is part of my, um, yeah, part of my entire grading process. So let's say we are happy with this. You know, it's very also subjective if this is now too much or too little. Uh, one thing I would do here is just um, drag down the highlights in the primaries again because um, I kind of can tell that there is a bit too much highlights right now because of the glow as well, just to bring back the, um, yeah, just to bring back the, the, the sky a bit more, um, you know, not go not, don't go this far because it would just look weird. Um, but yeah, something like, something like this. There we go. It looks very orange teal, very cinematic in my opinion. Um, okay. Then vignetting, uh, we're going to go straight into, uh, this tab right here window. We're going to go and uh, create a circle and then basically invert the circle because we want the outside to be affected and not the inside. Uh, I will usually just put this over my um, kind of subject, which is myself here flying the drone as we just kind of established. And then I will also drag out this one completely. So it's like, a, it's like, a, you know, just fading um, more naturally, otherwise there is a very hard, like kind of corners or like edges. Um, so I don't want that. I want this to be very naturally, uh, kind of yeah. So anyway, uh, then color wheels back to this one, and then I will just really uh, drag down, you know, the offset a little bit, not too much, because you don't want to crush any shadows here or whatnot. But just to give it a bit of a, a bit of a. Um, you know, decrease in gain on the edges and maybe even go into the gain itself and just kind of like, uh, you know, play around here. Uh, always be subtle with your adjustments because I have the feeling a lot of people are just like always very hyped up in the beginning when it comes to color grading and like everything is like now super cool and they go really hard on the adjustments and then it, it just looks not good, right? So, um, yeah, always be very careful with that. Um, so yeah, this is the, the the vignetting. You can tell it's very subtle, but it makes it set, like folk like the entire image now focuses on on the subject and not and not on anything else. It could be distracted by that. So very subtle. And then yeah, last one is the grain, and this is just a very simple step, but effective if used correctly. Throw it on here, and then what I usually use is the archival print. And then this one basically I leave to the to the very um, default settings. I'm not doing anything kind of like fancy here. We can zoom in and then just you know check it, and yeah, you can see the grain. It's very natural. It's very like you know it's there, like it's there, but it's not that it completely you know changes the the look but it's there and it doesn't make a difference even though you may, may not be seeing it but it kind of like gives it a natural and organic feeling cool i mean this is you know this is pretty much kind of like the entire uh process here i mean we're coming from uh just uh, having a small screen and kind of doing tutorials is uh 
it's not always easy. Uh, so this is it. I mean, you know, I don't know. Honestly, like we could even like just remove these, and just go back to the to the drag and drop situation with a few minor adjustments at the beginning, and it looks very good. Like, and then we just go and have some uh, effects on it. Like, if you like them or not, this is really up to you. But the 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 lots work uh, as we have seen. Cool. Then we go and you know, let's just go with another one. Um, Let's go with a bit more of a aggressive one. And this might look like, okay, what the hell is this? Uh, totally get it. And that's why we're just going to kind of like, um, you know, this was before. And I completely changed the mood. Like, the thing is, this could look very like, hey, but this, this looks just so different. And it does. But this is color grading. Like, you can change the entire mood if you want to. This is why it's so important to understand that the most important things you need to consider here is that you have three ele like three things need to be in place for every color grade to be actually working, even though it might look a bit more fancy like this one. The skin color needs to be correct, and I'll show you in a bit what that means. The white and the black needs to be white and black. If this is, like, you can have the shadows blue. That's just how, you know, the, the, the look is. Like, you can tell here. Like, it's just how the look basically looks. Like, it's this blue, and then you have these kind of yellow orangey um, highlight kind of contrast. Or, yeah, just that's how the, this look is being, it's basically being made. It's very kind of in your face, but it can look very nice in certain conditions. I think even it looks nice here as well. Um, and you can tell that, again, three things need to be in place. Skin color, um, the blacks, and the whites. And when we go to the skin color, I can tell that this one is correct because of the vector scope. And let me just quickly, um, you know, just reset this. Um, and this is a good way, actually. Like, if you ever get, like, hey, where's my color? Like, then you just go down here, reset, and then it just kind of, like... Because, you know, over time, because you're kind of, like, um, grading a lot of footage, then the, the, the scopes are all messed up, so you needed to readjust them. Um, and you can just do this here. The settings, and then just reset. Um, anyway, if you... And now something is gone, and I can bring this back. You want to highlight or to check this show skin tone indicator. Check this, and now we have this line appearing, and this is where the skin tone needs to be, you know, plus minus. It shouldn't be here, it shouldn't be here, it shouldn't be here, it should be right, somewhere on this line, all right? So when we now zoom in, and I just pick my qualifier, then I can tell, you know, this is now the water, and I go over here, and my skin color, is actually, it's good. It's there. It actually it can be you if you if you would be very very like um, kind of critical about this, then I would be needing to correct this a little bit to the to to the red tone kind of area. And I can tell you, show you how that would be. You know, I would just drag up this whole thing a bit more to the red tone area just to bring this skin color more to this line basically so you have you know kind of like very subtle adjustments but you can tell the skin color is actually you know it's there it's hitting that line all right even though this is a very aggressive color grade um like being changing the entire uh like basically the entire um mood here like it's actually more like magenta and whatnot but we have been you know putting on a lot that just completely takes the colors and then just kind of throws them uh in a different way so this works right this is something that actually could be used like if you like it or not that's totally up to you again but this is a very very um you know yeah uh, cinematic way to basically take a footage that has been shot very flat and then just do whatever you want with it. Um, so what I want to do as well now here is I want to show you one more that would be created um, 
with, uh, you know, with, uh, let's just take this because it's different. Oh, actually, let's just take here um, this one. Um, so this would be, and I'm just going to reset everything and just going to show you what I would do if we would go with um, Rec 709, all right? So I'm just going to reset this all. We're going to start from scratch. Okay. Now, color space transformation is something that people have not been um, hearing too much and probably not even used too much, especially when it comes to DaVinci. So what you want to do is you want to go to your effects, you're going to uh, look up uh, color space transform, and then you're basically going to throw this on here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of like take our, like let's, let's say you are not shooting, shooting in, in, in log or in a flat um, picture profile. You are shooting in Rec. 709. Like this is usually what you get out of your camera when there is no profile, um, you know, settings being changed. That's how basically, it, we go back to video. That's, that's more or less how you should kind of like look at it. Like Rec. 709 looks, is, is a Kodak. And that codec is now all, it's like all the same for all like different cameras. Like, because if I shoot C-Log, for example, C-Log is not the same than, let's say, V-Log or S-Log from Sony or whatever log is out there. Like, they are all kind of different. So if you are using log, um, like log uh, LUTs, then there will always be a, a little change of or like shift of how it actually looks. But if you're losing Rack 709, that will always be the same for all the cameras because this is the output now. Rack 709 is the output. So this is the information now we are using for the other LUTs, which are also Rack 709. So no matter what camera you're coming from, and as long as it's shot in Rack 709, then we have the same uh, kind of like input to work with. So we have to change this now. So the color space transformation is, the, is what it basically is. It transforms the color space. And we, I am coming from a Canon Cinema Gamut, C-Log um, 3. And then I also have, I, I want this to be a uh, Rec. 709 and a Gamma 2.4. That is pretty much the standard out there. Boom. Now you can see, with only doing this, we have basically going from ultra flat to this video tone. Um, and this is where it is, right? This is, this is what it now uh, makes the whole kind of difference. Like, this is now our input to start color grading. So let's just move on. What we need to do as well now, obviously, is the white balance. And, you know, the white balance here, I can tell you this, looks already kind of all right. We have, like, the red here, the yellow here, the blue here, but we can tell that it's balanced quite evenly. And we go to the parade just to confirm that. And we can tell it actually is very balanced. So this is also because I just shot this in the right way again with the right white balance in camera. So always make sure that you do this in camera first because... Don't fix it in post. Like a lot of people want to then just like kind of like get over with the shooting and then fix it in post. Like this is not always the best thing to do because not everything can be fixed in post. And if you're, you know, a beginner, then usually that is even more hard to kind of like, um, you know, yeah, manipulate in a way that it actually looks good again. So um, let me just kind of close this one. So anyway. We are done with the white balance. We have color transformed it, and now we are going into primaries uh, again. And the primaries, you know, I just really want to see what we can do here, but I will definitely put in a bit of uh, contrast and then kind of like pivot that. Just always check the scopes, but then also just kind of check the image, how it looks. And I would say this is how I would do that. Um, and then we have like, it's 
it's beautiful. Like the entire dynamic range here is intact. There is nothing crushed. There is nothing blown out. Um, we are using the entire range of the lock, um, even though we transformed it from uh, lock to 709. Um, and now we have a very nice kind of like uh, input to apply the LUTs, right? So we're going to go and jump over this look correction again and go straight into our LUTs, go to the Rec 709 versions, and now we kind of like, let me just adjust this once more. <laughs> it's, uh, it's so funny how everything is kind of like squeezed together here, okay, just that you can actually see more. Okay, cool. So we are on the LUT, and now we are just kind of like showing, uh, going over the Rec 709s. And, you know, they still have the same effect, um, slightly different because it's just, you know, not a log in this case, but, um, but they still have the same effect, you know. And you can use them, and they are working, and you have the entire range still. Like, you are not being limited because you are using Rec. 709 now. You are actually just telling the system or the, the, the image that this now should be Rec. 709 for a reference point, but you're still working with the entire range or dynamic range of a log footage, which is brilliant. So let's just, I don't know, let's just use one we didn't use yet. I think number three. Put it on. Okay, you can tell. Everything is kind of like, um, you know, there. Now what it does is it kind of like crushes um, some of the, some of the um, shadows here. So we want to bring them back by just going into the primaries and then just kind of lift them up a little bit. Um, something like this. And then also, um, I would say, I, I, I will put some gamma back in here because I can see that there is some blacks being a bit uh, lost there. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much what I would do with this. Um, I would also maybe just drag down the highlights a little bit because we're gonna throw on a, a glow effect now. And yeah, let me do this as well. Glow, put it on again, down to composite type, and then kind of like uh, put it on soft light because you just want the highlights to be affected. And then, uh, <laughs> this is such a game here, <laughs> okay. And then go back to the effect controls. I'm just gonna close this quickly so we have more space, Jesus. There we go. And then I'm gonna play around um, with the threshold again. Let's see what it does. The spread. Um, why, why? What's happening? Something is. Okay, something is not right. Let me just redo this once more. Okay, we're gonna go soft light because there was a there was something that it shouldn't be there. There we go. I don't know what happened. Um, anyway, gonna go into the fifty kind of area again, and then the spread. You know, just make sure that this is also kind of in the middle, but then affects the highlights nicely, and then the gain. Let's see how much gain we want. Something like this you know, making the object pop. Um, I'm not gonna do any vignetting here because I think it's already nicely popping. Just some grain again, you know, some film grain. Go again to my favorite one, archival print, that's it. You can tell it is right there. You know, just focus on this part on the skin. It's right there, it works. And now also to demonstrate again that we are on the right path with um, with the skin color, vector scope, you know, here it is. 
and it is on that line. So this is very important. Anyway, this was just a quick demonstration of how I am using the, the Cinematic Pro LUTs in my workflow. The, those are the LUTs I am using, you know, a lot of the times. And, you know, there's many ways how you would probably be able to, to use them and to just kind of like, um, you know, implement them. But up to date, my favorite and best, I would call them even signature LUTs, um, because they are really the ones I'm using 90% of the time. Um, and yeah, I hope this helped. I hope this kind of like, you know, was more than just um, a drag and drop tutorial, how to basically, um, you know, probably not color grade because I see a lot of, uh, I don't know, people selling LUTs and then they just really don't explain how you actually use LUTs. Um, so yeah, let me know. You can uh, always text me on Instagram or uh, wherever you want to contact me and if you have questions then let me know um, I'm, I'm happy to answer them um, and you know try my best to get back to you and yeah with that being said I'm not going to stretch this more I hope you're having a fantastic day or night wherever you are and I will see you around or in the next tutorial somewhere take care bye bye